CataractCoach.com. Posterior polar with capsule rupture. Pre-existing capsule rupture in this case. What's your approach? There's the posterior polar opacity and a big rip right through the posterior capsule. That haze that's formed there is lens becoming opacified because of its exposure, because the capsule's wide open. Get a good orexis, you're gonna need it. Don't do any hydro dissection. A little delineation would be okay, but no hydro dissection. You can see it going with a phaco probe, making a little bit of a pit, and let's get a chop going. Lateral separation, do not push posteriorly, otherwise you'll rip the posterior capsule even bigger, and it'll be even more of an issue. So again, trying to get these pieces split and bringing them up gentle, gentle. You can try to rotate the nucleus, but it may be difficult given that there is no hydrodissection. So you don't need to do that. Just split the pieces, bring them up. We learned this from a previous video on Cataract Coach. When you have a damage to the posterior capsule, do not do hydrodissection. Do not do um, nucleus rotation. You don't need to. Get the pieces up. Don't let the AC collapse. Good use of viscoelastic there. Smart, smart, smart. Now, getting the other half of the nucleus up, bring it up, and you can just emulsify it. No need to even sub-chop it. Bringing it up, if you'd like to chop it, fine, but bring it up to that iris plane and emulsify it. And now we'll try to get out as much of that um, epinuclear shell as you can. You may need to do some viscodissection. So again, there's that poster polar opacity. Don't let the AC collapse. Such a smart move here. Very nicely done. Going in again, trying to emulsify that epinuclear shell, and it comes out pretty easily. And then for the cortex, you're going to be very gentle here. Almost certainly the best option here is going to be putting in a sulcus lens, three-piece lens with the haptics and the sulcus. The optic can be captured via buttonhole through the anterior capsule rexus. So again, using that chopper to help just lift up the pieces of that epinuclear shell. Be cautious here. Again, don't let the AC collapse. Such smart, smart, smart use of viscoelastic in this case. I really got to applaud the surgeon here. Oh, more viscoelastic to visco dissect with the probe in the eye too. Fantastic. The visco dissection there with a dispersive agent is very helpful. Getting that piece separated off. Now coming out of the eye, more visco dissection. Yup, there it is. That's going to help. So some of these posterior polar cases, even I've posted one of me in the past, a posterior polar case where the patient had a posterior capsule defect and rupture. You can go to cataractcoach.com and click on the complete list of videos and you will see all the videos, um, subcategories, including an entire category just about posterior polar. Yeah, we have that many videos about it. So look at that beautiful visco dissection and all quadrants. Very nice. That separates the, the little epinuclear shell, but also even separates the cortex from the capsular bag. Want to save that capsular bag? Beautifully done here. And then again, more hydrodissection or visco dissection, no hydrodissection. Getting those pieces up. Once they're up like this, you can just uh, wash them out of the eye, put the probe back in, and emulsify all those. Here, even a bimanual approach for the cortex removal could be very helpful. But plenty of viscoelastic. Obviously, viscoelastic is cheaper than vitreous. We all know that. So again, get those pieces up. And then for the lens, yeah, definitely. I'd do a three-piece lens here because you have a posterior capsule defect. Good use Going through the side port, now using a larger bore cannon to manually aspirate that out. That's a way, good way of doing it too. Plenty of dispersive viscoelastic already inside the eye. You can even feel free to make another paracentesis incision if you need to. And you can avoid vitreous prolapse in this case. Now going with the eye probe, sub-incisional area, getting that aspirated. You definitely want to use some Triumph Sinolone in this case to stain any vitreous. If the anterior face is intact, that'd be fantastic. If it's not intact, you may have to do an anterior vitrectomy. And the case that I posted a couple years ago on Cataract Coach in my posterior polar where there was a defect in the capsule, we did an anterior vitrectomy and the patient had a beautiful outcome. So good, more viscoelastic, don't let the AC collapse. Very good surgical technique here. You can really learn a lot from this video. Here at the end, good anterior face looks like it's intact. Three-piece lens going in the sulcus there, happy in the sulcus, beautifully positioned. That's the correct orientation as well. And there it goes, haptics in the sulcus, optic captured like a button through a buttonhole through the capsular rexus. And that's going to be a very stable outcome and a very happy patient. Such great learning in this case. Here's the triumph signal at the end just to make sure that there is no vitreous prolapse. And you know what? It looks great. There's none. Intact anterior hyaloid face. Beautifully done, surgeon. I am very, very impressed. And you should be also, and you need to learn about posterior polar cataract cases. So again... You can see the ca capture of the 
Optic, and you can see how the Rexus turns that oval shape here. Finally, at the end of the case, seal up the incisions, call this a day, patient's gonna have a beautiful outcome. I wanna remind you, we have a contest coming up, the Cataract Coach Video Contest. Full details are available on cataractcoach.com. Go to that website, click on the link, You'll have full instructions. I hope you win. I'd love to give you the grand prize. Check it out.